Finally tonight, we continue our occasional series about women helping to bring equity and change to the workplace in this time of Me Too and Time's Up. Jeffrey Brown paid a visit to the set of a veteran director who's been hard at work at this for years. We are rolling. Rolling. At a cemetery in Richmond, Virginia, actors Claire Danes and Mandy Patinkin shoot a scene at a funeral. We can't tell you who's died this time. You'll have to wait till later in this seventh season of the acclaimed Showtime series, Homeland. Now, we don't want to walk into the shot. Behind the scenes, Leslie Linka Gladder, so. one of television's most respected and prolific directors, who knows what it takes to do the job well. Certainly tenacity. Tenacity. Yeah, you know, it only takes Which one means person don't to say, give up don't give up, and no matter how difficult it is, and wear comfortable shoes. Yeah. That's very important. Tenacity one, comfortable yes. shoes two. And, and don't pretend to know something you don't because you will get caught. Someone will know and then you won't learn. Huh. You know, and learn everyone's name on the first day of shooting. There are both men and women. It's a philosophy that's taken Linka Gladder, now 64, to the top of her profession. Directing more than 100 hours of TV, including such shows as ER, The West Wing, Mad Men, as well as Homeland where she also serves as an executive producer. The show, created and led by Alex Ganza, has been shot on locations around the world. As CIA agent Carrie Matheson, played by Danes, battles terrorists in the see. Middle East and Europe. And these days, dark forces within the American government. Get in. What? I stalled the guy, but only for a couple minutes. I have to get you out of here. This season, much of the action is set in Washington, D.C. Welcome to our Situation Room. But the shooting is being done in nearby Richmond, indoors in a large warehouse you know, transformed into the White House and other government settings. Madam President. Once again, Homeland's plot has a rip from the headlines feel. I was there that day with you in the lead vehicle. My driver was killed in the explosion. We are we're yeah. in a very divided, unstable world. Yeah, you know, imagine uh, that. I know. <laughs> uh, and we have the president of the United States. Yes, the president at odds with her intelligence community right. in a world that's kind of a post-truth world. But for Linka Gladder, there's another pressing issue of the moment in her own field. For while she's made it as a director, too many other women have not had the opportunity. I started directing a while ago. Um, and if you would have asked me, would we be discussing this? I would have said, absolutely not, Jeff, no way. This will be a non-issue, nothing to discuss. And the fact that we are still having to talk about that is very surprising to me. She points to a survey by the Directors Guild of America showing just 21% of TV episodes in the 2016-17 season were directed by women. I don't think anyone's sitting in an office and twirling a mustache and going, ah. No know, women. No women. Let's not hire the women. I think it's, it's deeper than that. I think it's, you know, in that land of unconscious bias where women are still all lumped together. And I've had it said to me, you know, we hired a woman once and it didn't work. You know, you've, so, you've literally had oh, that yeah, said to you. multiple times. You think about arguments you might hear, like a, a lack of qualified women? Yes, that's you so do, not you, true. That's not true. Absolutely but not But you still true. hear that. You still hear that. You, they, because it's easy, the handful of women that are working all the time, you know, okay, yes, they're qualified because, you know, they work all the time. Right. But there's so many women who are definitely qualified uh, that, that are not. You know, so it's just not an equal playing field yet. You know, it, it comes up often that, you know, a young director, a male director will do a small indie film and then the next movie they're doing is a huge, right. you know, million, studio, yeah, a, you know, hundred million dollar movie. Uh, that has not happened for women. You know, they, it would be said, oh, she doesn't have enough experience, but somehow a man has the enough experience. Who's in charge, she says, also directly connects to the sexual misconduct issues that have come to the fore. And, uh, honestly, I don't know any woman that hasn't been put, in, myself included, in some sort of position where you can't quite believe this is happening. Now, that, mm -hmm. there's an, there, there are uh, levels to that, whether you're talking about sexual harassment or, uh, you know, hostile work environment, you know, there, there are degrees of all of that. But I think it's coming out because it's been unspoken. Mm -hmm. and, and the need to speak 
and, and feel that it's okay to finally speak is huge. Mm -hmm. And no one should ever be in a position where they're you know, uh, harassed or abused. Mm -hmm. uh, it should never happen. And you shouldn't create an environment where that can happen. Back at the cemetery, Mandy Patinkin, who plays veteran intelligence operative Saul Berenson, spoke of working with Linka Gladder. Leslie wants as much input from the people that are there. And in my opinion, that's a smart director because it's a collaborative effort. It's a collaborative game. And, uh, and, and you're being foolish not to ask, you know, the other people yeah. what they feel, what they would do. Yeah. And, and to listen and, and to be ruthless in terms of um, making sure that they are telling the story. Why do you think there are so few women directors still? I think there's so few women directors because the world has been run by men and the world isn't doing so well. The world's certainly not doing very well now. During a break at another site, Claire Dane shared her experience. Our show is surprisingly diverse and, and no small part because of Leslie's involvement. She really makes that a priority to hire people who are not sufficiently represented. So, um, you know, we have more female directors and uh, uh, than than most productions, but still, it's not enough. Yeah. Has that been your, true for you in your career? Or? I mean, I've worked. Is something with... you notice? Yes, uh, I mean, it's impossible not to. But I think that is starting to change. It's a you know, it's a it's a powerful phenomenon that's occurring right now, mm -hmm. and and it seems to um, be having a real impact. Linka Gladder credits her rise in large part to the support she got from powerful male mentors, including Steven Spielberg, for whom she worked during his 1980s TV series, Amazing Stories. My first day of shooting on um, that amazing stories, I ended up doing three of them, so it was my film school on every level. There were 200 guys storming a beach in World War II with 12 cameras, so is that a gender thing? I don't know. It was a filmmaking thing. It was a story thing. She's made it her business to mentor women ever since, having them shadow her while she works. That's thrilling to me. Many, she says, now with strong careers themselves. I should also say, Jeff, I was told when I first started doing this by other women, you know, why are you doing this? You're going to make it harder for yourself. Really? Yeah. Yeah, and again, yeah, as remember, in like I started rocking the boat, or, or just no, not rocking the boat. Just like there's only room for one of us, and it better be me. Oh. And if you are bringing all these women in, it's going to affect your career. And I can tell you categorically, that has never happened. Mm. It it certainly didn't by helping other women direct never hurt me as a director. I'm still here, you know, tough old broad. <laughs> So yeah. Now she's involved in a new push aimed at gender parity, working with NBC Entertainment on the Female Forward Initiative. No, Beginning great. in the fall, 10 women will shadow directors on an NBC series and then direct at least one episode themselves. How about someone shows me some good faith? Not going to happen. That's Homeland, of course, also features strong women in front of the camera, including Elizabeth Marvel playing the president, as well as Danes. While the show continues to explore the shadowy world of secret intelligence, Gladder and others aim for more women in positions of power in their world. Here we go. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown on the set of Homeland in Richmond, Virginia. Hi.